Hey y'all, welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License, my Thursday stream where we do a little bit of whatever I want. And today we're going to be doing a particular dating sim. We're going to be playing I Love You, Colonel Sanders, and we're going to be doing it blind. So welcome in, welcome in. So happy to have you guys here. I know it's a little bit after Valentine's Day, but it is still February. So this is our uh, quote unquote Valentine's stream. So I've got, we're all in pink today. We are all in pink today, all pink lights everywhere. Um, totally, totally pink. Also, one thing I want to tell you guys, there is a new command for the chat, exclamation dice. That will show you all of my dice stuff. So you can follow me on there and keep up with what I'm doing. That's where I'm gonna be putting dice updates. Hey, Lunar, welcome in, welcome in, and welcome Kuneko, of course, I said in the chat, but I think you're also lurking, so you're probably not listening, but that's okay. The welcome still will, will reach you, will reach into the ether and, uh, <laughs> and find you. So I'm going to open up my little box here, and I'm going to pull out the two designs that I'm working on right now. I posted pours of these on TikTok, but I want to show you guys the way that they came out. Um, Thank you so much for the Howl Lunar. Thank you so much. Okay, so here we go. This one right here, this is one of the pores. I'm gonna see if it'll, we can get it to refocus on the die. There we go. That's good enough. You guys can see it. So this is blue with purple sparkles. And the, this is based on colors that my husband likes. We're gonna call it Royal Blood because that kind of matches with the monarchy thing that we've been doing. Same as the first red and green one was called the Prince's Rose. This one right here, this is based on my roommate Jeff's favorite colors, which is a light green and a gold. And we're going to call this one Money Tree. Oh, this is not focusing right now. Cover my face. You can try to, I can try to see it. Yeah, get up there. The problem is, is when I cover my face and I can't see very well if it's focusing or not. That's not coming out. Y'all aren't able to see that super well, I don't think. But I will be posting pictures of these when I get them sanded. Um, they are not right now. They are still very, very uh, raw. They are in a very raw state. Thank you so much, Lunar. I really, really like these blue ones, too. These blue sparkly ones. They look, like, so dark and nice and beautiful. So I will be posting pictures of those on my Instagram. And, of course... Uh, there will be a part two TikTok when they're all sanded and painted and all of that so you guys can see what that looks like. Um, and, uh, and of course, updates always go on my Twitter too. I always retweet myself. So that's the dice update. That's the dice update, you guys. If you want to make sure that you're getting them quicker and you're not just seeing these little, you know, little bits at the beginning of my Thursday streams, make sure you're following my dice content so that you can see where I'm progressing with that. All right, guys, as you know, we like to start out our Thursday streams with a little, a little personality quiz. And in honor of playing um, I Love You, Colonel Sanders today, our quiz is what fast food restaurant are you? So here we go. Link in the chat. Take it with me if you have a moment to do so and tell me what you get. We're about to see what I get. All right. What is your favorite movie type? Romance, comedy, olden. Olden, I guess classic maybe is what they mean. I don't know. Olden, superhero or action? Mm, I don't know that I necessarily have a favorite movie genre. I guess my favorite movie genre would be uh, good movies. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Um, I do always watch the superhero movies, though, even if I'm not like super interested in them. I'll still watch it if it's a superhero movie. So I guess we have to mark that. That's uh, as far as these go. That's the closest I can say for a favorite movie type. What's your best quality? Loyal, trustworthiness, smarts, looks, being the boss, or earning money? Hmm. I hope, I hope that it's trustworthiness. I feel like smarts could be it too, based on what others uh, tell me. <laughs> uh, but uh, but I, I hope for trustworthiness, so we're going to go with that. What is your idea of a great vacation? Stay at home, Disneyland, a foreign country, road trip, camping, family reunion. If this said Walt Disney World, I'd be sold. But since it doesn't say that, 
Um, I do like staycations, but that's not my favorite. Foreign country, I think, out of all of these. Definitely not here for camping. Not here for camping. So I think out of these, foreign country is best. There's definitely a lot more countries in this world that I would like to get a chance to visit. What's your favorite kind of drink? Um, Coke, Mountain Dew, Fanta, smoothie, lemon li lime slash lemon water or water. Does this mean like Sprite? I don't know what this means. Like putting a lemon in your water or lemonade? I don't know. Uh, water. It's, I try, I drink like 90% of what I drink is water and coffee. So <laughs> uh, we're going with water. Wendy's, you're good, clean, and loyal. You are not a ripoff, and who doesn't love a Frosty? Everyone loves Frosty, and you have to dip the fries in the Frosty. That is a rule for Wendy's. What pet would you have? What pet do I have? Okay, they've got dog, cat, hamster, goldfish, snake, turtle. I've actually owned all of these at one point in time, except for snakes. I've never owned a snake. Um, I did own turtles as a kid. I've owned lots of different kinds of fish who had different points in my life. Um, I owned a lot of guinea pigs, and we owned a hamster briefly, uh, was not a very good pet for our household, and it was my sister's pet, but uh, but still, like it just it didn't really work out. Um, I really liked owning guinea pigs, though those were good. And I currently have cats and a dog, but I think cat. Out of all the animals I've ever owned, uh, cat I vibe with the most. I find them the um, easiest for my lifestyle as far as taking care of them and enjoying their company. Okay, Burger King. What? I don't know what the Burger Kings are like where you guys are, but the Burger Kings in this area are disgusting. I have not eaten a Burger King in, I think, like, six years. No joke. The last time I went to a Burger King, we were very hungry, and it was the only thing that was close, and we went in, and we tried to order this special burger that they had, and we said, can we get that, but add onions? And they said, no. And this was a conversation Levi was having with them at first. And for you guys that have not met my husband, he has a um, he has a very strong personality. And so usually he would just, you know, argue with them and say, you know, well, I'll pay extra or whatever. And, and you know, just haggle with them until he would get what he wants. And, uh, and he was so shocked because she just said no with such confidence that he just stared at the woman and said, uh, uh, okay. And it was the nastiest Burger King we've ever had, I'm not gonna lie. But what we should have said in hindsight, I wish one of us would have thought to say, um, but I thought it was have it your way. So anyway, that was the last time I went to a Burger King and I've never been back since. Will it work? I say, this is not Burger King, you can't have it your way. Well, the last time we went to a Burger King, we could not have it our way either. We could not add onions to a burger. It was like, it was ridiculous. Um, I don't know what was wrong. I haven't been back to Burger King since because it didn't even taste good. Um, but anyway, what this quiz says is you're, you are a clean restraint. Is that supposed to say restaurant? I don't know. Your food just depends on what you get. Some of your food is better than others. I feel like this is a very wishy-washy answer. Let's see what the other answers are. You can get McDonald's, Taco Bell, Arby's, Wendy's, or Sonic. Yeah, um, Burger King, I, I dislike. I dislike. I'm actually not a huge fan of Sonic either, but I'll get like their drinks and shakes and stuff like that. Ours in this area shut down. Ours are in the process of shutting down. There is very few. And they're all owned by a particular franchise owner that if you talk to people in food and bev around here, say um, is an absolute tool. And there's barely any left because they all suck, like all of them. And I found out later it was because is, at least people in the food and bev in this area claim that it's because this guy in particular is just absolutely terrible at running restaurants and he owns all the Burger Kings. <laughs> they're awful. They're all awful. There's not very many and every single one is awful. Ours was dirty and full of bugs, so people caught sight of that and boom, shut down. Yikes! Woohoo! Yikes! 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 Okay, guys. So apparently, according to this quiz, I'm Burger King, which sounds like the wishy-washy answer to me. I don't know. Whatever. This is the first quiz we've done that I really, I really dislike. I dislike the answer. I dislike the, the thing. Now it's a steak and shake. Oh, steak and shakes are much better. Small portions for the price, but uh, but the food is, tastes really good. Okay, you guys, let's switch over to the dating sim. So I'm gonna get it loaded up here. I didn't load it at all because I wanted to make sure you guys saw the intro. I did run it and made sure it played, but that's all I have done so far with this game. Otherwise, I am completely blind. 
So I'm going to hit play and it should load up. I'm just making sure that it's going to load. Oh, you can probably hear it, but I don't think you can see it. Here we go. Alright. Let's romance the chicken man, guys. What? Okay, first of all, I know the game is way too loud. Let me turn this down. Oh my god. Oh my god. What did I just watch? That was so anime. Okay. <clears throat> Are we ready? I'm ready. Where's Kendra? Someone tag Kendra and tell her to get her pretty booty in here. Alright. New game. I'm ready. I'm ready to romance the chicken man. Okay, welcome, chef. Before you get started, tell us your name. Wow. Very wow. Super wow. Look at them chicken and biscuits. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. Let's see what we got going on here. Apparently this is the K-pop band that I like. And um, Year of the Rooster, I guess, is what's going on here. I don't know. I could click on a bucket of chicken. There's Kendra. Kendra, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for donating to the Finishing Doki Doki Literature Club challenge. Once we reach that, I will put it on the schedule and we'll finish Doki Doki Literature Club. Okay, here we go. You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm- oh no, I already read that. I thought I clicked next. Okay. The world is peaceful and serene. You could stay in this moment forever. What? Oh my gosh, Lunar, you did it! Okay. Expect to see that on coming up on the schedule in the next um, couple of months. As you guys know, I plan month to month, kind of, so it might be a little bit before you see it pop up on the schedule, but, um, but it will happen. It is happening now. It is happening, you guys. Um, this game is very loud in my ear, so give me just a second to turn it down in Windows as well. So I feel like my ears are getting blasted. Not in a good way. Okay, there we go. Now I feel like I'm not getting destroyed. Um, did it get too quiet? Get quieter for you guys? No worries, Lunar. Thank you so much for lurking. We love our lurkers here. Okay, here we go. Let's get back to the game. Y'all tell me if the game's too quiet now. <clears throat> or you could wake up. Now, now, now! Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. Oh my god, that alarm is annoying. Whoa! Um, smack that clock up and at him. Throw the clock out the window and stay in bed forever. Oh my god, I just, I have to make it stop. Okay. Oh, that was an annoying alarm. Okay. Uh, laying in bed, you stare at the ceiling, thinking about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy of Learning. I think I'm blocking, my camera's blocking some of the, um... Some of the text. Let me just adjust the Karen cam. Let me move all of this up the screen a little bit. There we go. Thank you so much for the lurk, Kaneko. We love our lurkers here. Okay, there we go. Now I'm not blocking the text. Your mind begins to wander. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. You'll need to take this seriously. You allow yourself to daydream a bit thinking about the future. Um, daydream, absolutely. It's here, finally, your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late. You grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry. I hope it's a chicken biscuit. Mmm, delicious. Just what you needed to wake up those taste buds. Mmm. Mmm, not a huge fan of KFC biscuits, I have to say. I hope I'm gonna pretend this is a church's biscuit. Yikes, you're in such a hurry, in fact, that you forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh, shit. 
This is not good. I guess I, I shouldn't have daydreamed. <laughs> Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She is the most adorably awkward person you've ever met and you absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Karen. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Oh, you know I am. Oh, shoot, I clicked too fast. I missed what I said. Because I sure am excited. A little nervous. Okay, uh, okay, a lot nervous. What the? It's just that this morning I made breakfast for myself, but well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. <gasps> oh no, love's the most important ingredient, you guys. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? Oh no, Miriam, don't cry. Classic Miriam, raised by master chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. Who has a quicksand box? They're just sandboxes. But with University of Cooking School Academy of Learnings, oh my god, are they going to say it every time? A famous three-day only semester. I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. A sweet girl, Miriam, has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth practicing on a mannequin. Oh my god, Miriam, you disaster child. Should you pep talk her or change the subject to give her some relief? Let's pep talk. Let's pep talk the best friend. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. Oh my god. Oh my god, Karen. Why'd you bring that up? I know she looks spooky, but she was so sweet, and she told you that you are destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy-looking tower and that other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting for so long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. And I'm sure you will soon. It's no time. In no time we'll be graduating, and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. Well, yeah, if it's only three days of class, my god. <laughs> Same, exactly, exactly, Kendra. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. True, you rock that fringe, Miriam. Can you believe I cut them myself? I cannot. You can definitely believe it. No! No, they look fine! Uh, I cannot believe it. Excuse me, before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hand and onto the ground. <gasps> it's Ash Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil, but she can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. Then why am I imagining her with sparkles all around? Hmm? Why? Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. Now she looks the vampire, yeah. There's always a vampire in these games, so maybe she's a vampire. If you leave Karen's shins alone, they're perfectly normal shins. Uh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name's annoying. You know for the fact that it's actually Ashley. But she adds extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. Wow! Oh. Dissing on someone's name. Okay. If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man. <gasps> what? <laughs> Has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight you can see his pants. His pants are so tight you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. Oh my god. <laughs> Van Van. <gasps> you rang? Whoa. Oh my god, he looks like he jumped out of a JoJo comic. My god, Van Van. You've never been sure what their argument is, or their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, every time, would ever allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You'd think they just hand us our diplomas now, oh my god. Or maybe hire us as professors. The amateurs could learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just no time to properly tell these two off. So you resist the urge. <laughs> Why does he have that shirt front that's wrong? It's super wrong. He's like wearing... It's like an apron, but it doesn't go all the way down. And it's like, it doesn't even... 
It's like a, a faux apron. It's like a fapron. Let's go, Miriam. See you later, losers. As you approach the door, you see a goofy-looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. What? Oopsie. I think it's broken? You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. It's what dress shirts used to have in the olden days. Just put the dicky on and suddenly have a fancy shirt. Oh my god, Kendra. <laughs> you would know. You would know. I love you. Wow. You were moving a little too fast there, Pop. Who the fuck are you? I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Oh my god. Hi, Pop. I'm Karen. So, are you going to make me hold this door all day? No. <laughs> and with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me or is he kind of cute? Okay, Miriam, whatever you say. I think it's just you. Yeah, it's just you. You both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. Who this man? Who's this? On my screen. I don't understand. I see some chicken on the board. That's good. That's good. Got some equations in a triangle, so we know we're doing real learning. And then a map. Okay. A scruffy looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of the class. Adorable. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. <gasps> Is the dog my teacher? Is the dog my teacher? Who is this unreasonably cute pup and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Oh my god, it has an acronym. Good. <laughs> Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect. Oof. What? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up the nuances of fine dining. Oh my god. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around you and a swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. Oh my. I am chilly. Someone close the window. And then... He walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. It's him, it's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. <laughs> Sorry, Professor Tog. Um, before he can finish his sentence. Please, call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders, oh my god. Kendra, what is this game? What is this? And why does it have everything? A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. And over there must be sweaty sweats a lot. Maybe we should open a window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. And what is it with all your really weird insults? What is it with their really weird insults? A marketing ploy done well? It's what it feels like. It feels like someone took the assignment a little too seriously. Besides, when Karen sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. Miriam. 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 Please stop. Oh no. You turn to find Colonel Sanders standing right in front of you. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Boy, howdy, this classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky fryer. What? <laughs> Please use my handkerchief. Oh. You freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Wow. Do you hear that shimmering sound effect? Because I do. Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look? You're completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? Oh man, I have to take the handkerchief. I have to take it. You stretch out your hand and Colonel Sanders places the fine silk handkerchief in it. It's so beautiful. You hesitate to press it to your face, but when you do, the feeling is transcendent. It has his natural scent on it. It smells of the most delicious chicken you've ever smelled. Hey, Eliza. 
What's up? <laughs> what does she think of the chicken man, or is she entranced by the dog? Yeah, this does not sound pleasant to wipe chicken grease smell on your face. But apparently, we're into it. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class dog down and sets some ground rules. Welcome to University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. Oh my god. Stop saying the whole name. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There might even be really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle! You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's arousing speech. Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss quiet. Who is this man? Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? Tummy too upset for chicken wipes. Even if my stomach was strong, I don't think I could wipe my face with chicken smell. That's just weird. Don't you recognize me? This is my third year in this school with you as my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled! If you utter one more word before I finish! Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable! Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student Sprinkles is referring to, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance? <laughs> There's a robot in this game. There's a robot in this game, you guys. The class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom as everyone stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose in the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. Why is everyone so mean to me? What did I do to you people? You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. This implies that there are both talking and non-talking dogs in this universe, and our protagonist has encountered both sorts. You decide to try and butter him up with giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? Um, let's give him a chicken snack. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite! I knew it. Well, well, well. I think there might be some competition for a new star student. The furry professor immediately devours a snack, leaving your hand slick with coating of warm doggy drool. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors with them at all times. Well, in a universe with talking dogs, of course you would. Why wouldn't you? Settle down, young chefs. Take your seat and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing in the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Karen, there's still a seat here. It seems that no one has claimed the seat next to me if you're interested. Oh no. Two options, but which will you choose? I gotta sit by the hot boy. I'm sorry, Miriam, but if you're really my friend, you'll understand. We're gonna sit by Colonel Sanders. You move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears that he brought no books, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off a seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me this seat. I've only have two rules. Do all you can and do it the best you can. It's the only way you'll ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. It's like waxing poetic about this. That's so inspiring. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast, it's time for a pop quiz. A quiz about me? No, no. The child character is very off-putting. For me, I have to say. He's got a weird stain on his shirt. This incredibly important and surprising short quiz will tell me if you are ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. If train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Extremely looking at you, Pop. Exactly. Pop looks like if you shook his hand, it would be sticky. And that's why I find him uncomfortable. Extremely. That's right. 
forest is to tree as chicken is to a slam dunk. <laughs> I guess a feather because a forest is covered in trees and a chicken is covered in feathers. That's right. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A comically oversized fork, a meat tenderizer, or a spork? A spork. That's right. What food is best for your broken heart? Anything as long as prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat. A pancake that looks like a silly face. Anything as long as it's prepared with love. That's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? <laughs> no, yes, he's a talking dog that teaches culinary school. He is the best boy. Yeah, he's the best boy, obviously. That's right. Your total score is five out of five. Perfect score, you guys. We're winning the dating sim already. Wow, be honest, did you cheat? You look up to see Colonel Sanders has been watching you tally your score. He's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. I think you have a beautiful brain. Wow, and we got hearts too. Thank you, Colonel Sanders. Hot diggity, Karen. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch. Oh, that is important. I believe in the sanctity of lunchtime. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. <laughs> but I... Sh <laughs> lunch, lunch, lunch! <laughs> she says, shh. In honor of the new semester, I've prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this... Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. It contains its contents glimmer in the light. Yeah, um, you know, buff arms better to make fried chicken with. He needs a neck vein for Kitty and I? Yes, he does need a neck vein. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken, breaded and fried to crispy, golden finish. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. It's really not that novel. It's really not that novel. <laughs> Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. I feel a little dirty saying that, like this is clearly a KFC commercial and I'm, I'm literally, I'm literally doing a KFC commercial for entertainment. It feels very strange, you guys. <laughs> you look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. What did he say that you would write down? I don't understand, but that's all I'll say about that. What, you think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshaw. Nah, my dude. Nah. I'm just uh, drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of those ingredients is a uh, poison. Got him. He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at a sick burn. You wait to see what singer Ashley is prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment it only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with a cooking skill like that. She wants him all to herself. Oh, please. Hmm. Well, Van Van the Man Man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Wow, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. <laughs> He's destined for Karen. That's right, Ashley. Back the fuck off. Easy now. There's enough for everyone, please. My fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of his bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. 
Pasting Colonel Sanders food transports you to another dimension. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. What? Okay, I can focus. It says, focus your mind and meditate on this moment. Try and identify every flavor. Savor the moment and everything that he tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart. Swim towards the light. Are we in Taco Bell now? Fourth meal? I feel like we must be. We're in, we're in the fourth meal void. <laughs> we are in the fourth meal void, you guys. Okay. We're going to try and identify every flavor. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing every flavor. Salt, maybe? Pepper? Too obvious. Oregano? Basil? Maybe? But there's something else. Something dark, something spicy. You dig deeper, deeper, deeper. Yes, even deeper still until you find it. Could it be... What is this? Spoiler warning? I cannot click this. He really did it. How bold and adventurous to use... Spoiler? You try and go even deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize that this information was meant to remain secret, and yet, now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests on your shoulders. <laughs> How dare you give me a responsibility game? Can't give away the sauce. I guess, but I mean, it's probably like paprika or chili powder or something. I mean, it can't be that complicated. I've had KFC before. It's definitely not that complicated. As you look around, you realize that everyone in the room is consumed by lunch. No one noticed that you've traveled through space and time. Mm. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. Okay. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef? What exactly is on the chicken? Ahaha, ha, how bold of you to come out and ask. It's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. <laughs> it's a special sauce. <laughs> Whew, well, I guess this special sauce is a little spicy. <laughs> so rub the cane to get it out. Sure. <laughs> It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. Well, he does not look pleased. <laughs> He's clearly not gonna give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt to be persistent. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Aww. You got Moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone, and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use chili powder. We're gonna say it's chili powder, I don't know. It's something my great-grandmother taught me. Wow, I never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. And chili powder definitely isn't the flavor you tasted before, so now you've got two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe, but you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared, while everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. Because this game is very dirty, Kendra. This game is very dirty. <clears throat> well, you know, he looks like he had big enough titties for milking, I'm just saying. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world. You can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure out now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Neg to show him your strength. Wow him with a big idea to add that additional ingredient to really spice things up. Be modest and thoughtful. I feel like I've been pretty bold with him, so I think I should, I should like tone it down just a little. I don't want to come on too strong. I don't want to scare him away. So we're going to be modest but thoughtful. Well, I just wanted to tell you that I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. The flavors were complex but comforting. The interplay between salty, savory, and peppery, it was all perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Karen. I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. We should head back inside. The next lesson starts soon. 
You step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place, it's magnificent. Finally, we get to show off our stuff. Wait a second. Oh no, we've got to show off our stuff. What if I totally blow it? Man skipped leg day. <laughs> oh my gosh, he totally did. Colonel Sanders definitely skipped leg day. You're not going to blow anything, except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over at you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle the lesson as a team? A team of two, that is, me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Sure, Karen, I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Hello, new partner. She bops. Oh no, she gets stuck with the messy child and the robot. I'm sorry, Miriam. Oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to... It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but it's like the price you'll pay for not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Um, we cannot put her with Pop. We cannot put her with Pop. No way. That child is gross and sticky. Um, so she's gonna have to go with Clank. Sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay, I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of the school even is at this juncture. Yeah, what does he mean he already ate? We all already ate, we just had lunch. I don't like Pop, not into it. Yeah, robot for sure, exactly, Kendra. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Okay. Hold on there, fellow, we don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have the face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. I agree, definitely better than Pop. Bzz. Tissue, I hardly know you. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Clank judders and panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. <laughs> Looks like you two will be fine. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. All right, you two, for today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic ditch and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Steak tartare seems easy enough, it's fancy and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potatoes and gravy. I mean, like, yo, this is the KFC game, we have to go with mashed potatoes and gravy. And I can make a better one than KFC is, okay? And I'm not even a good cook or anything. Oh yeah, he liked that, y'all saw the heart explosion. I'm trying to get him to explode more hearts for us. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting, maybe mashed potatoes. And gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to get beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Ah, uh, looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? Yeah, no tentacles for the Colonel. I don't think he's into that. You know what I mean? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business, and you better keep your fingers off my man. Did someone call for me? Uh, no cheese, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Karen's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arms full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into the boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley. Van Van, are we working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looked like Karen was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Ha, <laughs> doubt it. Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubt whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken was quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? We fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. <laughs> it just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear, she's coming for Colonel if you don't watch out. 
Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Um, we're gonna turn to Colonel Sanders. Yeah. Sorry, Miriam, but like, if we have time, maybe we'll play again and choose Miriam stuff and see what happens. I'm here to learn and to express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with prima donnas. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? You turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I choose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chooses me, isn't that right? A businessman respects all fair agreements, from contracts to handshakes. It took I took on Karen as my partner for this activity, and I stand by it. Based on your team's behavior, I'd say you're perfect for each other. Neither of you has Karen's natural talent or their loyalty. Being defended by Colonel Sanders leaves you feeling proud and full of potential. You look for sprinkles in hopes that he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn those cute corgis in their short but sturdy stature. You look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture, with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, out of which pours a smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Colonel, where did you get the gravy? Have we both just been cooking while we've been having this argument? Or did that gravy come from elsewhere? Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular. Granny would be very proud. Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Wow. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. You love something. Set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Van Van! Do something! Do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Hold on right there, Karen. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arsenal, Colonel Sanders. I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you'll be better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. <gasps> Can I has potatoes face? Oh my god, pop go away. Fan Fan rushes back over, a converted dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy, pathetic. In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal, glazed upon my specialty, braised tentacle of octopus in my silky saltwater sauce, plated on a battle axe, forged by my supreme chef ancestors. Wow. Van Van, you're being a jerk, but I'm like so into what's going on here. You've ignored me for too long. This ends now. This is who, th it is I who will have the first bite and you will look on with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of the signature dish right off the plate. No, don't! Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and it may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Too late, it's been eaten. I, uh, I think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. What? What? Oh man, when the food's so bad, you die. Okay. Everyone step back, don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest is gone. You notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain just for a moment, then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oopsie. <laughs> Tastes like poison. You think, sir? You think? The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are as motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. I'm not sure the professor here makes enough money. <gasps> um, hello? I just turned into a ghost over here. <laughs> what the fuck? 
fuck is this game? It's too good. Stop it. <laughs> Seeing that you're shaken up by that really annoying student and all of his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark, more than a little spooky. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know, they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him in a way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Karen? There's something I need to tell you. <laughs> Hold it right there. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working towards that dream, day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also, lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. Obviously, Van Van the Man Man did not skip leg day. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I, you, shut up. I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. <laughs> I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. <laughs> Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, me, me. I'm the hero. <laughs> what? The spork monster is here to fight a hero? What? <laughs> Van Van the Man Man? I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. Van Van? How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid, be very afraid of me, because I'm a monster. See? Is he rhyming on purpose, or is that just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? What does this button do? Oh, this is just, okay. You guys, I have a problem. I have a problem. This game is making me very uncomfortable, but I really like it. Okay, let's attack. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. The attack really upset Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. What? What does defend do? You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. You continue to stay back and endure whatever comes your way. Seems like a pretty weird strategy, but okay, sure, you do you. Spork Monster focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself. What? They grow larger and more intimidating? How will you respond? Oh my god, I gotta guess I'm supposed to attack. You decide to go on the attack. I'm gonna cook with love. Spork monsters no quitter, buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Why do I only get one attack and they get all these different attacks? Spork monster uses you utilitensil, you take two damage. How much HP do I have? If you take much more damage, you're not gonna survive the battle. I guess fuck, I'm gonna attack again. Cook with love. Spork monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who's gonna clean that up. <laughs> Feeling vulnerable. Spork Monster prepares for the ultimate attack. Rounded Edge! Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of 1,000 chickens. Pot pie, power pinch! No! We got some nice boobage right here. Okay. Save me, Colonel Sanders. 10 damage, oh my gosh. Spork Monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. <laughs> um, 
Do we want to finish him or spare the wretched beast? I don't know. Um, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, we're gonna spare him. You managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of the gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast, and don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back, like you said. The spork monster scuttles off into the night. Maybe we'll get another monster tomorrow night? The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears to be the first, it, it appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it is so much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm, Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. Wow. We just strategically fainted, you guys. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home in your tired state. You don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dreams, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there instructing your love. Dreams are weird. Are we ready to go into the chicken voyage, you guys? We're going to have some fourth meal of fried chicken. You awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You can't believe he really used his special sauce. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the sport monster, she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think you- I might be, um... I think I might like Lank! Like? Like, like, like? I know it sounds like I'm moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. Oh, Miriam, I'm so glad for you. We got to talking after class and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Do you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in high school? No, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at a school he didn't even go to and was also the convertible also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of homecoming parade i'm thinking maybe something got lost in the pressure cooker language translation there either way maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with the new boy like i am with colonel sanders you and colonel sanders the coolest guy in school the most famous student to ever attend university of cooking school academy of learning you're a thing now we definitely connected yesterday. Ah, sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you know the second ingredient, too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret? Ingredient? Yeah. I just said that, a secret ingredient. Is there a traumatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure that you're alone before continuing. So this summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried flower petals, and that if he did him, a, if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. 
He was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, I cooked with them. A very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was unlike anything I'd ever tasted. I think you're being a little liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking. So we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about your new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe, and besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, please, please. It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? Okay, this is a problem. Because real Karen would totally tell. I just met Colonel Sanders. I just met Colonel Sanders, and I've been friends with Miriam for forever. But, I mean, this whole game is about romance and Colonel Sanders, so I don't think I should tell her. Like, I think I should be trying to go for the romance. Like, no girl, I really like this guy. Don't make me do something that I'm going to regret later. Tell her the ingredient turns. Colonel Sanders told you to make up a fake ingredient. So I don't even get the option to just be like, no girl. I have to be like, a fake ingredient. I guess we're doing the fake ingredient. The game doesn't give me another choice. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know. How about... It was Eye of Newt. I know. It sounds like some kind of witch's potion, but what can you do? Eye of Newt. Wow. Her eyes light up imagining such a thing as you figure out that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does something, some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Before you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. Oh, they even come out of the cherry tree. Wow. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school on the back of a horse. Oh my. Stand back and admire his majestic glory or run to him. Um, we're gonna run to him. I mean, we had a connection yesterday. I think it's okay. It's not too desperate. You decide that the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you up into the back of his stallion, and you'll ride away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel. However, your sudden movement surprised the horse and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. I'm back. I'm back in the fourth meal void. In the darkness, you see a vision. Ooh, Karen, I'm here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It's important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end, so you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... But before he can continue, you suddenly awake. We never get to know this dude's name. Never. We never get to learn this guy's name. Aw, oh, jeez. You awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices, or is that just his natural seasoned musk? Compliment the craftsmanship of this horse's shoes or lean in for a kiss. We're gonna compliment the craftsmanship of this horse's shoes. Maybe he shouldn't he shouldn't be riding a horse to school, and maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who was in the wrong here. Yeah, I don't know. I was just trying I was just trying to show him some gusto. But one thing is for sure, that Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like, counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with restricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad? You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulders. But he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Wow. <gasps> uh, 
Okay, we're gonna act like we're not interested, but really try to get a closer look. We're gonna be a little devious like that. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van muttering something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. You try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. Ahem, it's time for class and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. Oh, and you're emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary school. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after you encountered the spork monster. That's the same book I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't been studying the book. They've got pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing. <laughs> Pop, that's not, they're not, they're not playing. They're not playing, sir, they're not. Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. Watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Bzz. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language. Not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. <laughs> Uh-oh, Clank mad. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, or at least, or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town, and my tiny legs are very, very tired. <laughs> But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. Sprinkle stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. <laughs> down, boy. Down. Up, what is that? Off top in. That command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken! You want to pay attention to the lesson, truly, you do. Which is why, in 1776, at the signaling of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. When you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Okay, so chicken is food and also has sentience in this world if one of them signed the Declaration of Independence. So animals and robots both talk, all kinds of animals apparently, not just mammals or dogs. And yet we still eat meat. So that's cool. My earbud just fell out. I was so overwhelmed by the idea of a chicken signing its name that my earbud fell out. There we go. Now I can hear the lovely music. Okay. Well, Karen? Naturally, this appears to be a sample platter. What the heck is this game? We are finding out together, Pommy. Welcome in. Welcome in. Uh, my name is Karen Terry. I am a variety streamer. On Thursdays, we do a little bit of whatever I want. Today, we're kind of taking a break from our Nuzlocke that we've been doing. And um, we're playing I Love You, Colonel Sanders, um, where nothing makes sense and everyone loves chicken. And Colonel Sanders is a hottie McCotterson that uh, we would like to, to boink. So that is that is what we know so far. Oh, and I stream on Saturdays too, and uh, and that's more of like a, a podcast that we do. Okay, naturally this appearance appears to you as a sampler platter. 
Which item do you want to sample? A glass of water, a shimmering pepper, or a dog biscuit? I feel like there's only one right choice. I'm not going to sample a dog biscuit. A shimmering pepper. A brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally, you reach out, grab it, and eat it right away. Thank you so much, Pommy. You're cute too. But we're, neither of us are as cute as Sprinkles. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. The pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucinase. We're going back to fourth meal, guys. We're going back to the fourth meal void. Okay, the pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination. It feels like forever as you trip through the universe. I guess I ate like a Carolina Reaper or something. Oh, this guy again. My friend, oh, oh, this guy again. Hey, I just said that. <laughs> this guy again. I'm out here to give you an important message. Oh, you must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <coughs> I was saying to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is... <laughs> uh, sorry, I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat. It is fine, I'll work through <coughs> to fulfill. <coughs> I'm gonna give myself hiccups again like I did last stream, all this coughing. The prophecy! <coughs> you must. You feel yourself begin to regain consciousness. Oh man. You come to and find everyone. I knew it, I could feel it. I could feel I was doing it to myself. <sighs> Oh my gosh. No Mary Gibbs, go away. You come too and find everyone is staring at you. The pepper was the last of its kind on earth and now it's gone forever. Oh shit. <laughs> Stop hiccuping. You think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. I mean, it was looking so shiny and my other choices were a dog biscuit and a glass of water. What'd you, what'd you expect, game? We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you. Someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax... <laughs> the cafeteria lights dim. And your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Kill me. <sighs> Stop hiccuping. Today's lunch will be prepared. Oh, what's happening? Did my mouse just die? I think my mouse just died, you guys. Yeah, my mouse totally just died. Oops. Can I play this game? Yeah, I can. Okay, we can do it with the... Okay. Be a themed competitive cook-off! The level of theatrics with these two, it's off the charts. Oh, wait, I'm gonna have to get my mouse for that. Okay, let me get a thing that I can plug it into. Okay, let's get this plugged in. Where does this cord go to? Mm -hmm. Looks like I've got important things plugged in in most places. Some of this has got to be not that important. Where's this plugged into? Oh, here we go. We'll just reset the light. mouse has an amazingly good battery life but one drawback to that is like I forget to charge it all the time this is it because it lasts like a couple months before it dies all right here we go okay are we back on mouse let's off and back on there we go okay problem solved <clears throat> All right, the level of theatrics of this too is off the charts. Are we gonna demand they stop wasting everyone's time or step, tell, step up and tell them you're on? Oh, oh, Chicken Team Rocket is on. A bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool, you're the fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption, Karen. 
Thanks, Colonel Sanders. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sports in court. Sports in court. We're gonna do some sports. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. Oh, wow, Sprinkles. <laughs> timer ready. Just then a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. And that is an original quote by me. In case anyone was wondering, I hope its message lifts you to victory. Uh, thank you, Colonel Sanders. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken and you made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one. And you're feeling like you can really impress him again here. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does water boil at? Uh, this one. That's right. But how, but how would you have ever gotten to this school without knowing that? Water, winter gets to rub my furry belly. Like that enticing offer motivates you. You're going to need to season the chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he say he used? Eleven. That's right, you might know, know the ingredients themselves yet, yeah, but at least you're headed in the right direction. Tail whacking intensifies. <laughs> now you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? Um, fuck, vigilance? That's wrong, oh no. I'm begging you to get it together. Get it, I'm a dog. It's never the wrong time for some dog jokes. I guess next question. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you want to survive. I don't like this time. I don't like being timed, guys. This is so stressful. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy. So where do you come from? What? Um, a small town where dreams are born. That's right. This is your shot and you're not going to miss it. Oh, you try to shut out the noise of the arena and focus on your cooking. What's the sound of success? Sizzling. What? Don't make me get the spray bottle. What? How is that not the sound of success? You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Karen. Oh, thank you, Colonel Sanders. I try and I'm trying for you. It's for you. He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you were doing. Now you can think about his Colonel Sanders. How many spoons of gravy? What? Um, what? I couldn't even read them that fast. What were you thinking? Get your mind back into the competition. Grrr. You're stranded on desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. I know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're failing behind. Uh, this one. What does that have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken and delicate, delicate baked biscuits? I don't know. I don't know. You're really struggling to keep up. At the next station over, Ashley's already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. <gasps> Yikes. Oh no. I know you love nothing more than seeing fellow appliance utilized in kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. What? You might not have any hands, but Karen does, and a good chef needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixture to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Oh no! Did I shove it in while it was whirling? But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck and immediately crushed by the quick spinning beaters. <gasps> There's no way you'll be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easy way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Oh, it's too bad. And here I am with a completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no, it wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Karen's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he looks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skip straight to dessert. 
Under the white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of delights taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Karen to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring the creamer of delicate hot so chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden beneath. Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, tender nougat, and pearls of blueberry gelée. That actually does look really delicious, and I would absolutely eat the whole thing. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the chocolate mm. sauce. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. As he places his sauce-covered finger onto his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Uh, no. Back the fuck off, Ashley. Go that way. You reach out with your apron to wipe the sauce off his glistening face. Colonel Sanders recoils and brushes you back. The goatee isn't just a fashion statement, it's also functional. I was saving that flavor for later. Oh my god. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> Game over? What? I guess I fucked up too much. Okay, we're gonna try this again. I didn't realize there was a game over state in this game. Okay. Come on. Oh, I guess it's loading? Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim. Oh, this is the same. Can I just... Okay, yeah, that goes forward. Um, we're gonna demand they stop wasting everyone's time because that, I think that whole trial thing was like impossible. Is everything a competition with you two? Yes. Yes. Well, not with me. I'm on a personal journey to learn, to love, to learn to love? Sure, why not? But definitely not to constantly battle. Yeah, stop getting your genres crossed. Don't you have some portable monsters to capture or something? <laughs> wow. Okay, so they were supposed to be Jesse and James. Cool. I need to eat if I'm going to have energy to sustain my education and pursue my dreams of being a master chef. How are any of us supposed to get anywhere if we're constantly fending off challenges from every know-it-all with an apron? Besides, I already bought my own lunch. Karen, you should have it. It will give you the energy you need to succeed. Miriam reaches out and presents a gift to you. My special grilled cheese and tomato soup with chocolate milk to wash it down. Oh my god, it's so cute! It only takes you about five seconds to eat Miriam's tiny food, but it's just what you needed for motivation. You know what? I've learned enough for today. Let's battle. Just as things are reaching a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing court. Finally, a little sense. What is this happening? Oh, no. Oh, no, we do have to do this. Okay, I guess I'm not going to read it. I'm just going to answer. Maybe I can do it faster um than before okay let's battle guys i guess we do have to do this okay it was gratitude Oh, I guess it was the first one. Well, at least Colonel Sanders still believes in me. All of those were Colonel Sanders' imaginations. <clears throat> I guess that's how it is again. What? All of those answers were bad. Oh no. I guess I'm not supposed to get between them? I guess that's too bold? Yeah, we're still over mixing our dough again. This is the same as before. And, okay. Come on. Okay, we've seen this. Hmm. 
And we're gonna internalize our rage this time. I guess we're too bold before. Your rage burns so intensely with your, in your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash and they fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester or perhaps forever. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried brow, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult inside of you. A storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. I mean, yeah, probably. That's That would make sense. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. <laughs> oh my god. Girl. Calm down. You just met him like two days ago. It's gonna be fine. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from the run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is part of life, not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? It's exactly what I think. Well then think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you, enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, and motivated. Well, handsome, sure, I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together, which is true now, but it hasn't always been. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I have to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside of him, a burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My dream is pure, it's honest, it's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! Oh my god, pop go away. Just as your moment grows intimate, you are interrupted by the threatening shadow, shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before, you prepare for the worst. Oh no, it's the spork monster. It is I! I know I said I wouldn't be back, and after the whole fight to the death thing, maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but I just wanted to say that I was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. Oh wow. Um, I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Anyway, thanks, Borko. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I switched right into attack mode. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spork monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no, I was a golden retriever, but I was still a student until one day some mean kids with magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me and I was forever transformed. A magic spell book? Precisely. I had to procure a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I've lost it. If you find such a book, I beg of you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, you should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. Oh no, lady wants in. Pray she has to turn off the computer this time. Hello, kitty. You want to say hi? Here, say hi to everybody. Hello, everyone. Hello, my name is Lady. I like to destroy everything, as you guys know, since I turned off the Hamilton stream. Anyway, I'm going to hopefully go be a good girl and chill out. Mwah. There you go. She's gonna climb on the computer again, I can feel it. But I did put something over the power button, so hopefully she can't step on it this time. We'll find out. If you need me, don't fear. I will be there. It sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Karen, together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss? A personal invite? You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must look like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside the Sanders' home, surrounded by his things, you start to feel a special bond with him. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. 
Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. As long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Both, perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it secret? Reveal it, reveal it, reveal it! You decide that you're ready, as you'll ever be, to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. <gasps> I love coleslaw. KFC's coleslaw is gross, though. Sorry. This really just makes me want churches. <laughs> Who has better everything? The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. Magnificent! Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until the spoonful until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bit? I'd like to have it around so I can admire the taste later and think back on this moment. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable and I'll be back in a moment. You realize now would be the perfect time to do some snooping around the room in various items you can look closer at. Each item to, each item seems to radiate memories and emotion. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. You notice a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on the corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it isn't just realistic, it's real. Taxidermy? It must have been important to Colonel Sanders when it was alive. A little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Tap on an item to discover more about the colonel. What are you doing, lady? She wanted in and now she wants right back out. Go on. You can go out. I guess she just wanted to say hi to you guys and that was it. Okay. All right, let's click on this. You gaze out the window across the vast lake and mountain range beyond. Just then, the ghost of student pops up. Oh no, this guy again. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest to avenge my death? Wait, what? I never learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see him in the middle of something? You open the window a crack, and the ghost of student is swept out with the priest. <laughs> this poor guy. This poor guy. A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of this comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silvery color, it's actually made of spun silver. Wow, he has actual silver hair. A scented candle, you pick up and try to identify the smell. If it smells like fucking chicken, I swear to God. Power tool? Freshly starched collar? Piece of wood floating in a lake? Summer of 69? No. It's one of the secret recipe ingredients. It's... Tap on an item to discover... Okay, here we go. You take a closer look at the large urn sitting on a nearby table. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it down, you can read the inscription. It says, Here lies the ashes of all my past careers and business fa failures. Poor guy. Um, this must be where he keeps the secret recipe. You think for a moment, what number is important to Colonel Sanders? And then it dawns on you. As soon as you turn the dial to 11, 11, 11, the safe, safe opens. Inside it, you find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? No. No, it cannot. Please do not eat chicken sashimi style. Guys, that's disgusting. An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. From the goatee and mustache combo he sports, you figure that this must be Colonel Sanders himself, so he even has a baby, he had a goatee. Fantastic. That or maybe it's the drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of just themselves? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of the company they founded, am I right? <laughs> uh, I guess this is the last sparkle. You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet. You find a row of signature white suits hanging within. You take one off the hanger and try it on. The jacket's a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on, and he wants you to taste it. You try and act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. I don't 
usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket! You forgot to take it off. Um, I'm cold, sorry. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. I just got a little cold and thought this might warm me up. Colonel Sanders smiles and scoots closer to the fireplace. It's warm by the fire, why don't you come a little closer? Suddenly, everything feels like it's moving too fast. Final exams are tomorrow. Shouldn't you be thinking about what you're going to cook? I should be home studying. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Yes, Karen? I honestly think that this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into slumber. Dream sequence. Okay, we're in the fourth meal zone again. Oh, everyone rides the chicken. Oh my god. <laughs> you awake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. You think about the new secret ingredient you just learned about. In some jurisdictions, this isn't even, a, if it isn't even legal, but if the recipe is secret, how would they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the side of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's, mat it's meticulous? You taste Colonel Sanders' food and takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. I do love a chicken biscuit for breakfast, so I can't really be mad about this breakfast. It looks looked really good. So would you say that we're the perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Uh, we're gonna flatter him. You know, I think we might make a great team. A single tear begins to pool in the corner of, your, uh, of his eye as he gazes out the window. And with that, the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking about you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears, unable to speak. The only answer you can find is to run out the door and go home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? Uh, because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you and I got worried something happened to you. It's okay, I was just... But now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but... You will not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date! I think I can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. Of course I told him you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know a little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. Did she just say skydiving as if that's a typical first date to go on with a talking pressure cooker? Yes, I think she did. I think she did. And now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story, however, bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date, too! Back to Colonel Sanders' house. We spent the I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened but the emotional connection. Wowzers. Um, what? Miriam? If being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, you don't want to be right. Exactly! I don't want to be right. This world isn't for me. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. Oh no, I guess me and Miriam are having a friend fight. Oh no, that's so sad. Um, when you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because you know, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order we one up right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. Sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Oh. Yes, it is. You can get your swirly dip, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Because I'm literally the biggest person at the school. Well, I guess that's true, Van Van the Man Man. There is that horse Colonel Sanders rides on to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle, beautiful creature? You got some nerve, Karen, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words and I won't have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince in pain. Doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I'll never give up. Ever! 
Colonel Sanders arrives, just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Karen, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back into fighting form by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my hand, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? Oh my god. It was clear that your passion about how your food is received. There's a lot of words to say. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, Karen, I'm more than capable enough to speak for myself. Maybe you could tell me more about your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Karen. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who you know she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by the interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's, that's that book. It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of grimoire, but I don't really believe in the magic stuff. A grimoire? Like a book of spells? I don't know, who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered with arcane warnings, cast only in case of extreme emergency. It says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here. It says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final exam. <gasps> no, don't do it. That's way drastic. Couldn't you do something else? Like anything else? Not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic. But desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and you're pretty a pretty good excuse to try it out. Uh, no way! I would never want to erase Colonel Sanders. Take your friend's advice and put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something in this... something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. What? Um, he must be hungry? Uh, we're just gonna wait. Sprinkle stops in his tracks. He focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gauge, you can see a tiny orange squirrel perched in the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence, I told you never to come back here. Terrence, I will destroy you, Terrence. <laughs> I guess he's got a personal beef with that squirrel. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off his face. The squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again! After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone, or professorial tone. Ahem, I apologize for the outburst. This is actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Karen, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom. You see, but before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. What? <laughs> Sprinkles is interrupted by words and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. Oh no, he's crying. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you still haven't learned to speak Clank's language of mechanical noises. Oh no. But no, you had to show off to your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joan. Watch us form a triangle in midair as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Oh, what is happening? Yeah, well, that doesn't make a great date. Yeah, it, yeah, skydiving would be a really weird first date. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff for all I care. Oh, sad beat. <laughs> Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gaps in his panels and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Oh no! Oh no, he's malfunctioning. No amount of seasoning is going to make me want to eat that Clank. Clank burps at a completely deep-fried sneaker, considering that he himself has wheels, not feet. It's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep-fried footwear, I guess it looks okay. 
Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see the entire thing go down. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over the final day of school. Well, that was unfortunate. But we mustn't get distracted from what lies ahead. The final competition, showdown, challenge, exam, trademarked. I'm still working on the title, but I think you get it. Test time approaches. See you all in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? Okay. I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that? In front of everyone. Her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is just a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through the final test and hit the carpool lane to success city. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe, sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it, and the ranch is big enough for both of us and whoever else want, we want to bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone else you met today, tomorrow, or the whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show you a little interest anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review our, my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup, and I bet the Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay, because you have a better idea of how to spend time before your exam. You've decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your fried challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent. And a chance to beat the pants off Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his evil or counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through the quick test of a recipe you've been working on, Karen's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie from the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Karen, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were here cooking something delicious. You usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that decision gets hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Um, we're gonna do fess up about the practice dish. Oh, he liked that, yay. Okay, okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know, my nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from the from an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie just from the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no, I can smell that it was made with a heaping help of TLC, but it'd probably start burning any second if you don't pull it out. The moment of truth. Wow, look at that. It's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking, and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown's about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules, that is, except to cook with everything you've got. You step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus pot pie that you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are preparing wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely prepared to go big going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve on something perfect, his original recipe fried chicken. The intensity in the room starts off at a full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting serious. Oh my God. <laughs> is this like that one weird anime where they all have the cooking competitions? Um, I can't remember what it's called. It's like starts with Sen, Sen something. Um, Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, Baster Blaster. Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. 
<laughs> Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. Shallow personality spatula. Even Clank gets into it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? It's the singularity, as was foretold. We mustn't let it happen or the appliance uprising will take us all. Self just Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out to the back door of the arena. As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has her spell book out. Is she going to use some dark magic to turn the tide? You've got a book of your own and you're desperate not to see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's most certainly evil magic? Do no. Colonel Sanders would say, do it the hard way. We're going to do it the hard way. Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders says that you've chosen to win on your own terms and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Karen. Miriam notices too. And I've always believed in you, Karen, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice that Miriam is at your station, cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. It's the secret ingredient! However, she doesn't know that you lied and the ingredient was made up, and where in the world did she get Eye of Newt from? The boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into a dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. Oh no. We fucked up mac and cheese, you guys. It is I, Steve, the Spork Monster. Steve, wait, what happened to Borko? You're not here to battle me, are you? We spark monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off, but you have conjured Steve, and I hate to battle. I'd say so. I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh hey, you're in the middle of a cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve, the spork monster, notices that you've got the grimoire stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscross some magical items and accidentally summon me, huh? Yeah, actually, Drow, uh, Kendra, this is the um, second spork monster that we've met in this game. This game only gets more bonkers from the beginning, so you definitely need to go back and watch the, the VOD for the middle part. Ha, ah, yeah, you guessed it, sorta. If you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? i just love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually. You know, when I was just a little spork pup back in the old country, you can feel Spork Monster winding up to tell you a very long and involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but they seem like it was probably lonely there. Yeah, the VOD's gonna be real wild. Have fun. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on the competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time the monster school that I'd fallen asleep during scare attacks of class, and when I woke up, you toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Never mind. I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. I'm gonna sub an extra power from deep down within myself. You can do this. I have what it takes. I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows through your body. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for... Yes, Karen, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back out. You're interrupted by... You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground. Energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything. Except turn back time. Which will be super useful because while you're or powering up, the chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry, dear Karen. You may have suffered some setbacks, but it's not all lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I'm here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese, and time is almost up, so you're going to need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What will happen to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never been my thing. I follow my heart. What a guy. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting? If we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union. Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everyone's been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. 
A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen, you hear the pure innocent giggle that can only come from one student. Hee hee, I'm flying. Fuck. It sounds like it's coming from that broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside the closet, you see Pop hanging from a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can feel my legs. Maybe I be, may I be excused, or I can't feel my legs. <laughs> sure. You kids and your pranks, I must say, it's not the worst prank of UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature whir, beep, or other automatopoeia, but there is none. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. It's been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to test. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles in savory soup. My word, it's so delicate. Is that teeny tidy noromaki I spy on the itsy bitsy bowl? I don't think I pronounced that right, noromaki. Um, yes, chef. Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. Yes, Sprinkles, and some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime! Would anyone else like a taste? Oh, come on, I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Fine, I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much as it was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with as much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Karen, for helping me to believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made uni over smooth egg custard in an axe-hewn urchin cell shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Um... Sorry, I'm uh, letting letting everyone know the stream's running over a little bit. Because we're almost done with this game, so we're going to finish it. All right. Yes, Sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof, woof. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Arr. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. Oh no. The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. I keep poking my tongue. Disqualified. Oh no. In a stunning turn of events, who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles would make it difficult to eat? Dejected Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour? Don't discount simplicity. This isn't the last you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know, yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk, get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Yeah, all of Ashley's food actually sounds really good. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, it asks that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant as a display piece. How are you gonna make a food for competition and not let them eat it? Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got toast or something in your ears, Karen? I told you it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say it is beautiful. However, this is a, is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. And I did an extremely good job cooking it too. I didn't realize they were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. <laughs> I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard, you might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley, and she finally cannot keep to her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high cuisine if it cooked you! 
And with that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cook, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this thing and completely blown me away. In my 49 dog years of life, I've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced. It's so delicious, in fact, that everyone passes the class. <laughs> you pass, you pass, and you pass, and you get a pass. Everyone gets a car, you guys. Everyone gathers around and partakes in the mac and cheese bowl. They all seem to transcend this reality into another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive even that Van Van and Ashley are drawn back by its magnetic fragrance. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. They were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. <laughs> wow, Sprinkles can beatbox, okay. You knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but, is he all, but also a world-renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. I, I, I guess good mac and cheese can make you do that. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was a trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone's together, it's the spork monster. He's totally mellowed out. Everyone, the spork monster is no more. From here on out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking about spork, sorry, Party Monster. Dejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found love in her cooking, and you know she's gonna do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? It's Pop! He's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, you see perched atop his dirty chef's hat. A crown? Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do for the school's delay. Oh, now I get it. And we get a new wing on the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. <laughs> The music and the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparkling and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who's arrived late to the dance. Now that I've graduated, I can reveal my truth. Well, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I'm actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? <laughs> I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. <laughs> now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I don't know what to say, besides no, obviously. I have just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You're blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear that she's managed to surpass you in that regard. Yeah, I mean, I would go with Clank. I mean, show me the new planet. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. A portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time, it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. The end? Question mark. The real end is when you go drive to KFC and, and buy a um, bucket of extra crispy with sides and biscuits. No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Karen, what are you doing sitting all alone? 
Oh, you know, I was just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me, what are the qualities that you'd expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And my 100th franchise is up and running and I'll be ready to take a day off and I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Karen. How sweet, we'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think running restaurants is the best, best path forward? Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love, the life of an entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll at pastry school. Oh my dear Karen, I'm sure you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. I guess this is the end for real. Wow, you guys. That was certainly a game that we played. And I guess we're watching the intro again. I love you, Colonel Sanders. I just can't. I just can't. This is so much, you guys. It's so much. I don't know. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself. Oh my gosh. There's so many people live right now that we could raid into you guys. There's so many people. Um, Let's see. Let's see, what do we want to do? There's just so many. Who is this? I'm... Where do I know this person from? There's someone playing Elden Ring that's on my list. Um, I'm trying to remember where I know them from, see if they have a good looking stream. I don't want to, you know, when we've got lots of choices like this, I don't want to raid, raid into anyone that stream doesn't look so good, you know? You know what I mean? I want to make sure you guys have something fun to go watch. Because that was certainly fun. <laughs> and I really appreciate you guys um, coming along with me and, uh, and playing this game with me. So uh, next week, we will be going back to our Nuzlocke and doing some more of, of that. Um, we'll do a few episodes of that. Uh, and on the next inner stage window, we are going to be playing, um, we're going to be not playing. Yeah, no, we are. We're going to be doing our community. We're going to be playing Don't Starve Together. Here, I'll switch back to webcam only. So yeah, we're going to be playing Don't Starve Together on Saturday. If you're interested, um, please go ahead and join the discord and get the farmer role. That's where you get all of the information on playing Don't Starve Together with us. So if you're interested, do all that. Um, I would also love your support. Here's all of my socials. Um, I do things just like every other content creator does. You can support me in all of the same normal ways. All of the stuff is down in my about and uh, I'm active mostly on Twitter as far as social media goes. So I've got those links right there. Okay, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna raid into Pugzoomies because it's been a second since we have raided into him um, and he's playing Life is Strange right now. So why didn't it? What's happening? Are y'all enjoying that that Colonel Sanders background music? I am. It sounds beautiful. It sounds like I'm in an episode of Inuyasha. There we go. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for uh, joining me today on this really special game. <laughs> and thank you, Kendra, for bugging me until it happened. And um, don't forget, as always, of course, to make it a great day. All right. Bye, guys. See you later.